Hello everyone! It's been a while since I last made new videos, so I decided that if I do make a video, it will be in your favorite theme, quick tips. I've put together a compilation of 20 super useful tips that help me in my workflow, so this video will be helpful for both beginners and those who work with Blender for a long time. So let's get started with the announcement of the video. In this video we will talk about how to control the camera like in a video game, how to render your models with wireframe, we will discuss physical simulation, sculpting and materials and much more. So sit back and relax, it's going to be interesting. And let's get started. But first I want to answer one question. I am often asked how and where I learn 3D graphics. And my answer is always the same. The best way for me to learn is through courses. That's why I want to recommend an online school called WingFox, where I personally take courses. For example, I currently starting to learn Unreal Engine, so you can join me in the course on creating a post-apocalyptic environment in Unreal Engine 5. The course is designed for beginners and covers all stages of creating cinematics from preparation to uploading videos on social media. So if you are interested, you will find links to this course as well as other courses that I can vouch for in the video description. And now let's continue our video. And let's start with the camera like in a video game. To better navigation your complex scenes, use shift tilde combination. It will enable walk navigation, allowing you to control the camera like in games. WASD for movement, SHIFT for acceleration, Q for upward movement and E for downward movement. This is particularly useful for previewing scenes that will be exported to game engines. To check the parameters of your object, switch to the object editing mode by pressing tab. Then open the overlay menu, locate measurement section and select the properties you are interested in. I've chosen length and angle. Now I can see the length of each edge and the angle between two polygons. How to create such a welding seam? Select the object you want to join and press Ctrl-J. Then enter sculpting mode and use the Shift-R combination to choose the size of the new object's mesh. And press Ctrl-R to apply it. Press X to select draw brush and then in the brush settings Change the hardness and auto smooth. Add the texture and in the texture settings choose clouds, adjust the size and remove the depths. Change stroke method to line and jitter and adjust the dash ratio and dash length. Adjust the brush size with F and strength of its action with Shift F. And now you can create such a beautiful welding seam. Physical based close simulation in Blender is a very interesting and useful tool, but achieving good results requires spending a lot of time tuning the simulation settings. However, there is a simpler alternative that allows real-time control – close simulation in sculpting mode. To do this, open the sculpting mode and, for example, if you want to create a pillow, select close filter tool and set the type to inflate in the tool settings. Then press and drag the mouse. To add new folds, select the close brush and choose the desired deformation type in the settings, such as drag in this case. Use the F key to adjust the brush size and the Shift F case to adjust its strength. This way we can quickly manually create a nice looking pillow. You have created a model and want to present it. That's great, but in the comments people might ask you to see the wireframe. No problem. Select the objects, go into edit mode, press A to select all polygons, then press Ctrl E and choose mark freestyle edge. Go to the render settings and enable freestyle checkbox. Then open the layers panel. In the edge type selection, keep only edge mark selected and decrease the base thickness. Press render and you will obtain a render with the wireframe. If you are modeling a complex object and you need the geometry to consist exclusively of squares and manually searching for angons and triangles takes too long, you can switch to edit mode 
select Select All by Trade, choose Faces by Sides. In the bottom window, you will find the number of vertices of polygons. Currently, it's set to 4, so all polygons with 4 vertices are selected, while the rest have either more or fewer vertices. You can decrease the number to 3 to find all triangles, or increase it to find and guns. This is particularly useful when retopologizing and modeling with subdivision surface. If you find triangles and want to convert them into squares, you can try to select entire mesh and press Ctrl F, then select triangles to quads. You have created few objects with modifiers, and you need to quickly apply them, no problem. Select all the objects, right-click, choose Convert to, and then select mesh. Now all the modifications with the object's mesh are applied. This method is also often useful for dealing with issues related to shape keys and vertex groups. And here is a similar tip. If you need quickly interact with the modifiers of a single object, make sure to enable the modifier tool add-on. It allows you to instantly toggle the visibility of modifiers as well as confirm or delete them. This add-on can greatly facilitate your workflow. How to quickly create cut-ons in models? Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type Bull Tool in the search field and activate the add-on. Now we can quickly add booleans to our objects. To do this, first select the influencing object and then the object to be modified. Then press for example Ctrl- on the numpad to create a cutout. You can also use other combinations depending on the desired results. This add-on is must-have when creating hard surface and sci-fi objects, as well as when combining models for 3D printing. By the way, speaking of booleans, did you know that you can also use boolean operation in sculpting? To do this, we need to select box trim. This will allow you to trim objects using cubes. Or if you switch to the trim lasso, you can control the shape that will be cut out. This is so useful when creating hard surface objects in sculpting, such as this helmet, for example. If you need to make colors for multiple objects with different colors without using many materials, open the shader editor. Add an object info node and a color ramp, and connect them like here. Now the objects will be colored within the range of the color ramp, which is black and white by default. You can modify these colors as desired or change the interpolation type to constant to keep the colors unchanged. You can also add additional colors or modify the color mode and interpolation to have colors within a specific spectrum. This technique is also suitable for coloring particle system and can be helpful when creating similar scenes. If you need to create animation for hard surface models, you don't necessarily have to create a rig for it. First, you should set up origins, which are those orange points around which the animation will occur. Check each object. Where it's missing, go into Edit mode, select the point where the origin will be placed, press Shift-S and select cursor to select it. Then exit Edit mode and right-click, go to Set origin and select origin to 3D cursor. Repeat this for all objects. After making all the adjustments, check if everything is working. If it is, then we can create the animation. You need to select child object, then the parent object. Press Ctrl P and select object. Repeat for all objects. And now we can create the animation using shape keys. I ended up with a strange one. How to quickly create such packing for any object? Start by adding a cube to the scene and adjust its dimensions according to what you want to package. Add a subdivision surface modifier by pressing Ctrl-5 to add it. Then change the value to 6 and set the type to simple to prevent the shape from being edited. Next, add the shrink wrap modifier and adjust the offset. Now you have a great packing. By confirming materials, you can achieve a result like this.
If you need to quickly fill in a hole in the square topology, select all the points of that hole and press Ctrl F, then choose Grid Fill. In the menu below, you can edit some parameters and now you have a great squares grid. This works not only with perfect shapes like cylinder, but also with complex features. Not everyone knows, but cycles allow setting negative values for light elements. This can be useful if the elements are overexposed and we need to darken them. And speaking of rendering, if your computer is weak, and believe me, I know how it feels because I work it on, on a laptop without graphics card for a long time. In such cases, online render farms can help you render quickly. There are plenty of them available now at reasonable prices and even some free options. If you are interested, I can make a separate video about it. Do you know about inverse kinematics? It allows us to easily pose characters without manually adjusting the position of each bone. To activate it in Blender, you need to create a skeleton. I'll demonstrate it using leg bones only. In pose mode, select the bone that influences the movement and holding shift, select the bone that will be influenced. Then press shift I and choose this one. You can see that one of the bones turned yellow, indicating that it worked. We can test it, and everything should work fine. Next, select our character and the skeleton. Press Ctrl P and choose with automatic weights. This applies the rig to our character, and in pause mode we can enjoy the results. To be honest, it's still early to celebrate, because there are some obvious weight issues. If you see that you are interested in this topic, I will definitely make a video about it. Let me know in the comments. If you need to model a bottle, can, glass or something similar, in many cases it's better to use a busier car instead of polygon modeling. Simply add a busier car and then adjust its shape according to the reference. After shaping it, you can add a screw modifier to further refine the form. Additionally, you can add a solidify modifier to give it thickness and a bevel modifier for smooth edges and a subdivision surface modifier for smoother results. After working on materials, environment and lighting, you can achieve a result like this. To create beautiful edge view similar to Substance Painter using only Blender, follow these steps. First, go to Shader Editor, then add a color ramp node and connect it to Shader's color input. Then add a map range node and connect it to the color ramp node. Set the to max value to 0, to min to 1, and from min 0.9. Next, add a dot product node and connect first value from the map range node to it. Add a bowel node and geometry node and connect them to the dot product node. And now add a multiply node and also add a noise texture node. Connect the noise node to the multiply node and set the second value of multiply node to 0.2. And now we have node tree like this. So you can bake this and use it in your projects. This was my new rating of tips and tricks for Blender that make your work easier. Let me know in the comments if you want to see the same videos. Also let me know which tips you like it the most and feel free to share your own. I appreciate your likes and subscriptions. All the best and see you!